This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and look at what could be a small part of a section C question. Uh, so whereby you've, you've calculated the ratios, you've done the analysis and interpretation, and just for a few marks, it might ask you just to, to look at what the limitations of ratios are. Okay, so they are great. They have their benefits. They help us understand uh, and support the, the movements behind particular balances within our financial statements. But there are some disadvantages to them. So, so what are those limitations of our ratios? Uh, so what you've got there, first of all, is that they're historic, aren't they? We're taking this year's financial statements. We're looking at what's happened within the past. What about the future? It's important, isn't it? Okay. You know, you're an investor. You want to know about how this business is going to carry on into the future. Is it going to be more profitable? Is it going to generate more sales? Are we going to launch some new products? Uh, are we going to be taking on board more debt? What's going to happen to the dividends? So that's whereby we need to read a little bit about what goes in the financial statements. Uh, you know, just as an illustration here, taken from a published set of financial statements, uh, you may know the company if you're based in the UK or maybe even Europe. Uh, elsewhere in the world, don't worry, but it's a great illustration of, of, of how the past isn't necessarily so good about the future. Just have a quick look at the headline figures. Profits, what are they doing? Up, good. Earnings, okay. Uh, sorry, did I say profits? I meant sales. Uh, sales, yeah, sales have gone up, haven't they? Good. Uh, profits, down. Earnings, down. Uh, dividend gone up okay so even though this business has improved sales profitability is reduced so maybe there's been some big expenses that's gone through they've still decided to grow the dividend uh, to help us with what's lapping in the future the order book and the pipeline what's what's there potentially uh, all looks good so pretty good for the future your big concern i suppose is that you've got a 30 percent early 29 percentage increase in your net borrowing so you borrow quite a lot to, to make this increase in the sales to fund the projects so it looks okay it doesn't look disastrous okay so that's from Carillion's annual report in 2016 okay it was a service company that provided services to, to public sector bodies and, and private sector within the UK okay whether that was construction uh, or other administrative services Okay, so that was the 2016 annual report. So that would have been published early part of 2017. Okay, look at that there. Note the date. That's 13th of January 2018. It's taken from a, a, a BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation website, uh, the business section there. So, you know, just over a year after that, the headline, Carillion, matter of days to stop the collapse. Did they stop the collapse? No. Uh, Carillion is gone. It's no more. It ceased to exist. And if you look at some of the bits at the bottom, uh, it teeters on the edge of collapse with $1.5 billion of debt. Uh, a pence in shortfall is at the £587 million. So, you know, this company really struggled in terms of managing its debt, managing its pension, and then that has gone through there. Because the focus has been there that they've then effectively neglected other aspects of the business and, and the operating of it. And it's collapsed. Okay. You know, it, it, it effectively ran out of cash. Okay. So the financial statements weren't disastrous. They didn't look horrendous, but it didn't really help as much with the future. Okay. In that short space of time, one year gone. So you need to be careful. Other limitations is the lacking detail. You know, what about a cost breakdown? We see the revenue, cost of sales, admin distribution. We see a disclosure of the material costs that go into those cost categories. So whether that's your depreciation, amortization, impairments, uh, any major provisions that have been made. But there's no detail within there, is there? We don't look at the opening, the closing inventory, the, the purchases. Uh, we don't look at the, the detail behind what constitutes those those smaller cost categories so we can't do a thorough analysis on the cost is maybe what we'd like 
Uh, what about non-financial performance aspects? You know, we've spoken about performance. We've spoken about position. We've spoken about investor ratios. And we just crunched the numbers, haven't we, in terms of analysing the ratios. What about the topical issue of corporate and social responsibility? Uh, what is the business doing to ensure there that it is acting in a way, a, a, a method that ensures that the business is sustainable, uh, that we are not going through there and consuming too many resources, uh, that there's no impact on the environment. Now, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? And some businesses do this, and you can you can research it if you want. Uh, some businesses go through there and put within their financial statements what's referred to as an environmental profit or loss account. Okay. Uh, and, and that goes through there and just looks at your day-to-day -day profit, but puts in the, the added cost of consuming the Earth's resources, so the water, uh, the, the resources going into generating the power, the gas and the electricity. Okay, So it gives you a little bit of a better perspective of the overall performance of this business, taking account of the responsibility that, that business has to society, making sure that everything is sustainable. Uh, the accounting figures, you know, that they could be subject to manipulation. Maybe creative accounting could be taking place that, you know, gives you the, the wrong perspective of this business's performance. There's been plenty of those in the past with regards to Enron and Worldcom, but you know, they're, they're pretty old these days, aren't they? They were there at the start of, uh, the millennium. But if you look here more recently, uh, and this is on the ACCA website, uh, Tesco's in the UK got quite aggressive in terms of its accounting to try and boost profits. It tried to manipulate its revenue recognition. So effectively, it tried to recognize the revenue too early, uh, and it got caught out. And there was, there was a big trial that went on, uh, to try and go through there and find culpability. Okay. I think it overstated profits by 263 million pounds. Massive amount, isn't it? Okay. Uh, but again, you would not have identified that within the financial statements if you were analysing it until it was publicised. Okay, so again, it gives you a, a slightly incorrect view of how Tesco is performing over the years. It's all been rectified now; it's all fine. Uh, but it just goes to show you that even the largest businesses, the largest entities, can be subject to manipulation of accounts. Uh, accounting policies. We spoke about those way back at the start in the introduction, didn't we? Uh, revaluation versus cost, FIFO versus average cost. That could potentially go through there and distort your profits when you're comparing one entity to the other. And then don't forget, if you're comparing one company to the other, they might adopt a different accounting standards, mightn't they? Okay. So is one company using UK GAAP? Is one company using US GAAP? Is one company using IFRS? Don't worry in our exam. Companies that you have will be using IFRSs, but in reality, one company might be preparing their accounts under different rules as opposed to international rules. Okay, and what you've got there are just six limitations of your ratios. I would learn them so you get partial credit for the knowledge, and then the remaining credit for the application. So knowing why it is a limitation. Don't just say limitations of ratios historic. Okay. What's the issue about it being historic information? We need to look at the future and what you see in the past doesn't necessarily help you predict the future, does it? Okay, it give you an insight, but things might happen that are beyond your control. Okay, so work it through, write them down, note them, do that little bit of research that we went through there and, and spoke about, and then you should be fine when it comes to any exam question in section C on the analysis and interpretation of financial statements.